Greetings, everyone. My name is Jonathan Bailey. I'm from the website Plagiarism Today, which can be found at plagiarismtoday.com. I'm a plagiarism and copyright expert witness and consultant, not a lawyer. Please do not assume anything in this video is legal advice. You're not getting free legal advice on YouTube anyway, so why would you? But anyways, though I am not a lawyer, I have testified as an expert witness in multiple trials on related to plagiarism and copyright issues. I have also... Uh, advised many, many schools and companies and other institutions on issues related to plagiarism and copyright in their work. So yeah, if you want to check out the various consulting services I provide, check out copybyte.com, C-O-P-Y-B-Y-T-E.com. Um, if you find anything interesting, please definitely let me know. That is how I fund everything I do with plagiarism today and hopefully soon enough back here on YouTube. But I've got to be honest, after doing my little pitch there, that I am called unprepared, or at the very least, extremely underprepared in this. I've been working behind the scenes a little bit here, a little bit there, trying to get ready to reopen this channel sometime either late 2023, like in a few weeks, or sometime in January. So basically like a few weeks to a, few, a month or two from now. And it's been going quite well. As you can see behind me, I've renovated my office, and I now have the YouTube legally required wall of stuff to talk in front of. It's very sweet and very cool. I also have new lights, new sound equipment, and um, and a new camera, none of which I get to use in the space I'm in because I do not have all the rigging and the stuff that I need to set it up behind me where the wall of stuff would be properly framed. So please forgive me for A, using my onboard webcam. I know that's a cardinal sin. And for my very, very, very last minute rigged lighting scheme. Please just bear with me. It's honestly the audio that's the most important anyways. Also, to uh, fans of my previous work, I'm going to say this this particular video might be a little bit different. Normally, I just kind of get on here and talk all the cuff and just leave in stuff. Well, this time around, because this video probably is going to be significantly longer than what I usually do, there's going to be cuts and edits. Just bear in mind, that's just me taking breaks. I'm not leaving stuff out or removing things. I, I know that like cuts are normal in most YouTube channels and you don't have to explain cuts, but I've gone so long without doing it. I feel the need to at least address it before someone asks. So on that note, why am I here? Well, there's been a lot going on. On. Okay, so what exactly is going on here? Well, as most of you know, and probably the reason you're here, over the weekend, H Bomber Guy, the very well known YouTuber, dropped a three hour, 51 minute video about, well, plagiarism on YouTube. And as a result of that, my weekend got totally blown up, or rather, my Monday did, because it dropped Sunday and I didn't get a chance to see it until Monday. But yeah. This was a mammoth thing, and it really got a lot of people talking about it, especially the fact that he called out several prominent YouTubers um, for plagiarism. He discussed his, some historical cases. He talked a little about the philosophy and the nuances of plagiarism, and then presented evidence against two ongoing YouTubers, or rather three ongoing YouTubers, and allegations of plagiarism against them. I want to say before I jump into this that. If you're looking for like the TLDR and you want to stop here, um, basically, I think H Bomber Guy did overall a pretty good job, especially when it comes to uh, collecting the evidence and presenting it. I loved the animations that he used. I love the way he demonstrated. I've got I'll probably put a still here. One of my favorite shots from a rehighlighted all of the text copied or near verbatim or near verbatim from one James Summerton script. Just amazing work in that regard. But that said, there are still a few issues I would like to expand upon, correct lightly, or maybe just discuss further. Um, so on that note, what I'm going to do is we're actually going to break this up and take it sort of section by section, roughly the way that he did. Though, um, obviously, his chapter markings are a little different. But basically, we're going to go through it topic after topic the way he did. And I'll give my thoughts and impressions both on what happened and H Bomber Guy's coverage of it. So on that note, let's get started by taking a look at the first part of the video. The first major section in H Bomber Guy's video dealt with Philip Mayusin, a man whose name, even though I just listened to H Bomber Guy talk, talk about it and repeat the name multiple times, I still cannot pronounce very well, so I'm just going to call him Philip for the uh, rest of the section. But basically, Philip is a plagiarist that I covered not once, not twice, but three times on Plagiarism Day. The first time was after the initial scandal when he was at IGN, was accused of plagiarizing the Dead Cells review, 
And then basically more and more and more allegations of plagiarism came out. I then cover him a second time after his very, 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 very misguided apology video. And then a third time after his very, very, very failed uh, comeback attempt. So there's three articles about him on plagiarism today already. I'm very familiar with this guy. Uh, for H. Bomber guy, though, this was sort of a historical context. This was laying the groundwork, talking about a story people were probably familiar with uh, to sort of frame plagiarism in a larger context. And overall, once again, this is a the theme of the video. I think he did a pretty good job. I think he did a decent enough job. But there was one point where I think maybe he went a little bit too far and took the took his narrative just one step um, beyond what I think evidence supports. And that was when he was talking about and debunking Philip respect when they're stealing from people he respected because Philip made the argument, oh, yeah, I found a bunch of people I respected and took their work. And H. Bomber guy, quite rightly, I might add, said that's not a sign of respect. Now, I do agree with him there. That's not a sign of respect. But H. Bomber guy seemed to take it a point further in referencing the Melania Trump case and saying that plagiarists actively target people they don't respect. And that has not been my experience. Either uh, in terms of, you know, my interviews and the research that I've read and participated in on plagiarism, but also just what I think is the real world of how plagiarists work. You see, plagiarism pretty much always is a crime of convenience. Plagiarists, when they're looking for material to plagiarize, only typically weigh two things. The first is how easy is it to get? There's a reason, other points in this video, H. Bomber guy talks about how, oh, it was so easy to find. It was the first result in Google. Well, yeah, they're plagiarists. They're not doing it because they want to dig through 30 results in Google. They're going to take what's easy. So what's easy and what they think they can get away with. And now, disrespecting someone may put the thumb on the scale a little bit when it comes to disrespect. But other than that, I don't think plagiarists actively target people they disrespect. I think it's more of it just happens to be, you know, people they don't respect. They get picked up. Um, that said, like I, like I said, H. Bomber guy did a great job with the segment overall. I just found that to be taking the point a little bit too far. But I do agree with his fundamental point, which was that, yeah, plagiarizing someone is not a show of respect. It's just a show of, hey, I found your work and it fit my purpose. That's all. The second major section of um, H. Bomber Guy's video took a look at the Cinemastercre slash James Rolfe slash Nude Wallen slash Monster Madness plagiarism scandal from October 2021. This is one that I've also covered on Plagiarism Day. Once again, links down below. But my article here actually came out fairly early in the news cycle, and it didn't include a lot of information that was discovered, or at least I learned later on. And that includes the identity of the actual plagiarist, in this case, a gentleman by the name of Newt Wallen, um, and other details, which I think are pretty important. So honestly, H. Bomber Guy's video on this topic is probably more complete than my own coverage. I'll just acknowledge that now. Um, that said, to recap the story slowly, uh, most you probably already know, James Rolfe, better known as the Angry Video Game Nerd, has historically done a YouTube series where he posts a video every day during the month of October. He calls the series Monster Madness focuses on a combination of, Jap you know, like the Japanese monster movies, horror movies, whatever sort of strikes his interest that year. Well, as he got busy with family and other obligations, that kind of fell by the wayside a little bit, understandably so. It's a mammoth project. Uh, but in 2021, he announced that it was coming back and it was going to be the classical style. And he even announced the theme. It was going to be around the world where it was going to be every day. It was going to be a different country being covered it sounded very exciting. And as a fan of Rolf's work, I was excited. I remember being personally very invested in this one. Anyways, um, when the first video dropped, it was quickly discovered that the content, the verbiage of it was heavily plagiarized from another article about the movie. And yeah, when it was discovered that it was actually a person working for Screenwave who had done the plagiarism, this just threw gasoline on the whole Screenwave situation. A lot of fans of James Rolfe were not happy because of the changes that the MCN had made to his channel. And like I said, this just made things so much worse in that regard. And basically what happened from that point was they had to go back and re rewrite and re-edit and I guess, you know, make a lot of changes to a large number of the episodes. And the result of that 
was a lot of headaches for everyone at Screenwave and for Rolf himself. You know, basically everyone not named Newt Wallen had a serious headache from it. That's what happened. Um, once again, H Bomber guy covered it pretty well, but he had made one point that I actually want to expand upon and highlight because it was such a beautiful point. It really deserves more attention, and it's something I'm definitely going to write about soon on plagiarism today because it's something that even I neglect. And that is, he talked about how bad the writing. You see, the plagiarism here wasn't just copy and paste plagiarism. Uh, Newt went through and attempted to edit a lot of the words and rewrite things to make it more his own, supposedly. And the result of that type of editing is always just poor quality writing. I mean, um, H Bomber Guy put up several examples of just comically bad writing. Like, nobody writes like this. It's just terrible. And so, yeah. Basically, this is why, you know, this type of writing isn't just unethical from a plagiarism standpoint. It's also just poor writing. Why are you doing this? All you're going to do is write garbage. And interestingly, this is a lot of what uh, generative AI does, because generative AI does not necessarily understand what it's writing. It's just taking what it reads and gathers from elsewhere on the Internet and then tries to rewrite it and cobble it together in a way that's cohesive and understandable to people. So if you're wondering why AI writing is not the best in the world, well, it's the same reason that this type of plagiarism produces very bad writing. So that's something to think about and something to move on from as we get into. The next portion of the video, the third part in this context, was... Illuminati, the name that I think caused my spell checker to explode when trying to write about this. Uh, yeah, there is a lot to unpack in this, but basically here, Illuminati is a YouTuber who is apparently well known for doing a lot of documentaries, a lot of short form documentaries and putting them up with like a very, very rapid pace. And as someone who's just now getting back into video editing, yeah, that's a rapid pace. Um, but anyways, H Bomber Guy proved pretty conclusively that she is taking words from articles, from other documentaries, and presenting them as her own words, and also using clips and footage found from other videos on the topic, and not clearly citing those as well. Now, this one does get kind of kicked into the weeds a little bit, because in a lot of the cases, Illuminati um, has a sources cited paste bin on her videos where basically if you go to the description of her videos you look for the you know the sources you can click a link be taken to a paste bin which is realistically nothing but a collection of links and not even really indicating like what pairs with what so to speak and not even like who you know like like who each one of these who are these people and these links basically it's very bizarre it's certainly not mla citation if you know what i mean not that an MLA citation would be appropriate here. And I got to give credit to H-Bomber Guy. He saw through this BS here. He saw through it pretty quickly and cleanly. This is not adequate citation at all. But I could tell in the video he was kind of struggling to explain why. And I understand because even I, for a long, long, long part of my history, have really struggled with this idea. But here's the basic thing that I want people to take away from this particular story. When you're doing citation, you have to cite two separate things. First, you have to cite the idea slash information. And the second is you have to cite the expression of that idea information. Now, copyright hounds are going, hey, wait, that's awfully familiar. Yeah, because in copyright, we talk about the expression idea dichotomy, the idea expression dichotomy, depending on which way you want to say it. Basically, under copyright law, ideas, information, et cetera, are not protectable under copyright. But the expression of that idea, you know, the actual part that it's written out or the actual video made from it is. So that's an important thing to understand is that in copyright law, only the expression is protectable. But when you're dealing with plagiarism and you're dealing with the ethics of attribution, guess what, folks? Um, you have to cite both typically. Now, if you don't use any of the expression, if you do a proper paraphrasing, if you do, you know, you just sort of retell it in your own words, then you don't have to cite the expression, but you still need to cite the idea and information. 
Now, I'm also going to give some wiggle room here because citation standards do change drastically from medium to medium and also audience to audience. For example, a academic, you know, if you turn in a school essay or something, that's going to have a different citation standard than an informal letter you write to a friend. Um, knowing what citation to use and in what environment is tricky and difficult, but that's not particularly the problem here. But I still want to get that out there and be very, very upfront and clear about it. So anyways, the point I'm trying to make here is that even if I accept that that paste bin link is adequate citation for the idea and information, which I don't for reasons I'll get into, it doesn't cover the um, attribution for the expression. That second half of the equation is completely left open. And that to me is a pretty big problem because she's clearly using other people's words and not quoting it, not indicating that she's you know reading something verbatim or near verbatim. It's very, very frustrating. So as a result, you know, basically it's pretty clear to me that this is not adequate citation for the expression. And I also do believe it's not adequate citation for the information either. And the reason is this, citation norms come from the community. This is something that is very, very bottom up. You're gonna see citation norms evolve and change in a particular medium, in a particular art form as time goes on. And you look at how other video essayists and other YouTube documentary creators do their citation, this isn't the method. They cite it on screen. They put it in a little thing in the corner. You know, they do something like that. They don't, you know, just throw a bunch of random links or a link to a random bunch of links in the description. It's just not how it's done. So, yeah, yeah it is definitely inadequate citation and definitely plagiarism of the expression. Though, hey, I'm not, I'm, I'm the expert. Y'all are the community. You get to decide if that is plagiarism, the information as well. That's, that's y'all's job, not mine. I just kind of report and cover on it. So anyways, yeah, he did a great job seeing through the uh, BS, but maybe not as great of a time, not as great of a job in explaining why it's BS. Hopefully that is something I've been able to help with here. The fourth part of H Bomber Guy's video is about Internet Historian, another prominent YouTuber, and specifically about a video that Internet Historian did regarding a dude who was stuck in a cave for a very, very long period of time. And this was a story I had not heard about. I'd also not heard about Illuminati. I forgot to mention that when talking about her. I have no idea why I didn't hear about that story. Um, but I actually know why I didn't hear about this one. And it's when you watch H bomber guys video, it's like, yeah, nobody knew about it. They, they did such a good job keeping this one under wraps. Cause basically what happened with it is he posted a video about the story and then it got copyright claimed. And most people assumed understandably so that this was just regular YouTube copyright tomfoolery, you know, as, 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 as happens from time to time. Um, and that was a, um, a viewpoint the internet historian did not seek to, um, you know, steer anyone away from. So basically, that's what a lot of people thought happened until some of his fans started trying to re-upload the original version of it and then got copyright claims of their own because they found out pretty quickly that it was heavily plagiarized from an article in Mental Floss magazine. Yeah. Now, the thing about this story for me once again, H. Bomber Guy does a great job laying out the evidence, laying out the series of events, and apparently he's gotten some pushback from fans of Internet Historian who are apparently trying to rewrite history and make it look like that original upload wasn't a plagiarism just because he has since re-uploaded it with a lot of text change and apparently with better citations to Mental Floss. But that's neither here nor there. The original upload is the problem here, and the copyright claim against it was very much deserved um, from the looks of it. So, yeah. But anyways, the issue for me here is, is H. guy says that this is the only uh, thing he can find in Internet Historians where this has happened. And I am kind of skeptical because he talks elsewhere in the video about how, you know, if you catch someone plagiarizing, odds are they've rolled that dice a few dozen times before. And this is just the first time they came up snake eyes type thing. He's right. That is very, very, very accurate. Um, yeah, trust me on that one. It is entirely accurate. If you do catch a student or a employee plagiarizing, you, the first thing you need to do is 
go back to the archive and see what else they've done. Um, in this case, though, either H. Bomber guy couldn't find it or he didn't look into it too deeply. It's a little unclear, at least to my ears, what all he did here. Now, I did get an email um, from someone saying there are other incidents in which Internet Historian has done something similar. I have not been able to verify that. I'm going to look into it probably next week. I've got other things I've got to do the rest of this week. I'm actually way behind on client work because of H Bomber guy. So screw you, pal. March, no, don't. It's been actually kind of fun. But regardless, um, getting back to Internet Historian, he is. Um, it, it's unclear though what else may have happened in his past, and I don't know if there just wasn't a thorough investigation. I just find it really, really weird that this recent video was so clearly, so obviously plagiarized, and nothing else could be found. And that goes against things that he said elsewhere, the H Bomber guy said else, elsewhere in his video. So, yeah, I think this is going to be the area where further research and more information may be coming out. So watch, you know, this space and other spaces for more information here. I just have a feeling this isn't the last we've heard of the Internet historian and plagiarism allegations. And the final section of the video and the reason H Bomber guy says it exists is this guy, James Summerton, a LGBTQ plus YouTuber who focuses on gay, trans and related um, presentation in cinema. I had not heard of James Somerton before this video. I had not seen his videos and I had not heard about him being a plagiarist. So this was entirely new to me. But yeah, wow. You know, it's interesting. Even though this is ostensibly the reason for the massive uh, H-Bomber Guy video to exist, it's also the section I have the least to say about. In the other sections, he was kind of talking about plagiarism more broadly and putting things in some context. And obviously, I can bring some of that on my own as someone who has reported on this for over 18 years. But here, basically, it's just a string of evidence against James Somerton and very compelling evidence, I might add. Um, that screenshot I shared earlier, and editor me is probably sharing right about now. Um, yeah, that was from this section where he highlighted just how much um, from one of Somerton's script was known to be plagiarized verbatim or near verbatim. It's quite shocking. It tells the story. I don't really know how much anyone like me could add. It's all very, very clear. Um, but there was one sort of side story here involving um, an, involving Somerton's co-author, Nick. Uh, Nick Hergott is his name. I think I said that one right, actually. But basically, Nick... Um, had been James' co-author for quite some time, and it was unclear if Nick knew there was plagiarism, if he was involved in the plagiarism, and what's going on. H. Palmer guy went out of his way to make it clear that he couldn't find anything confirmed to be written by Nick that was plagiarized, but you know, still, obviously, you don't know what you don't know, and that's fair. You don't know what you don't know. Well, in the aftermath of this video dropping, apparently before the uh, for James' Discord got shut down, Nick went on there and, and basically said that he was shocked to learn about the plagiarism and know that he wasn't involved. And this caused a lot of people, according to a Reddit thread um, on the H Bomber Guy subreddit, to basically show sympathy for Nick, saying that he kind of got screwed here. He was doing good stuff. But a lot of that uh, love and a lot of that respect seems to have faded after the Todd in the Shadows video that I mentioned, which puts the factual accuracy of a lot of this content in severe doubt and raises a lot of problems there. So I don't know. I don't know all the details, but it does not appear, at least, that Nick knew about the plagiarism or was involved in it in any meaningful way. So that's good, I guess. But it really does paint an interesting picture of how, you know, being a plagiarist or committing plagiarism doesn't just stain your reputation. It hurts everyone around you. Going back to uh, Philip's story way back at the beginning, when Philip was discovered to be a plagiarist, many outlets, mine included, um, didn't refer to it as the Philip Mayusin plagiarism scandal because that's not how it was framed at the time. It was framed as the IGN plagiarism scandal where he was working. Yeah, it wasn't until much later that the focus kind of got tightened onto Philip himself. And that's true here. Uh, James, by being a plagiarist, has not just tainted his own name, not just hurt himself, but 
anyone he brought into his fold of work with him. Could you, I mean, how would you feel if you were hiring someone and you knew this about James Somerton and you saw that the resume had, oh, they'd worked with James Somerton at some point? You're going to look at that a little weird. You're going to at least ask some pretty difficult questions, I would hope. So, yeah. Basically, this is an excellent example of how you harm other people around you when you commit these kinds of ethical missteps and why you shouldn't do it. I mean, I don't feel like I should have to explain why you shouldn't plagiarize, but apparently I sometimes do. So, yeah, don't plagiarize it. Not just you're not just hurting yourself. You're hurting anyone and pretty much everyone who's helped you in any way. Just saying. So where does all this leave us? Um, yeah, well, since the video has been posted, obviously a lot has been unfolding. One of the big things that's happened is both James Somerton and Illuminati have turned off all comments on their YouTube channels. I can't blame them. They're probably getting flooded with some pretty nasty stuff. Uh, some of it probably very fair, some of it very not fair, but still, that's the nature of YouTube. Comments, I'm pretty sure, have not been very kind. So yeah. They are getting played with that. I've also heard, like I said, I'd, I'd heard that James Somerton's uh, Discord was taken down. I cannot been able to confirm what's happened with Illuminati's. Um, I checked Social Blade on both of them since they're the ones currently active and operating. The uh, the Philip one and the Cinemassacre one, those have basically had their resolutions already. And Internet Historian, it seemed like that story because it only involved one video had almost pretty much resolved, but Illuminati... And James Somerton are the ones I was most interested in. Um, in Illuminati's case, her big thing came out back in May, April of May of this year, when she had a tiff with Legal Eagle, which is another thing I didn't discuss during her section, which was basically that, you know, she accused Legal Eagle of plagiarizing her work because they use several overlapping elements. And that one of their editors had asked how her channel did a specific effect. And yeah, it was all horse wash. It was all made up, but it proves a point that that H Bomber guy um, talked about. And I can support with my expertise and my experience that people who do commit plagiarism are extra sensitive about having what they perceive as their work stolen. It's kind of crazy. It's a little nuts. But yeah, it's, it's not an uncommon theme to see plagiarists snap at perceived plagiarism of their work just because, you know, it's kind of on their mind a little bit, I think is what it's about. But anyways, back to the point. Uh, I did check out Social Blade on both of them. Illuminati's troubles really began in April and May. And so she took a pretty huge hit then and has been on a constant decline as far as subscribers go since. It has not been going particularly well for her. I don't think the H Bomber Guy video moved the needle significantly more. I didn't see it when I checked. Maybe that's still kind of something incoming, but it seems like the people that were going to leave her for being a plagiarist had already might have left her. James Somerton, on the other hand, had already taken a huge hit when I checked yesterday. He had lost over 50,000 subscribers, a damn near one fifth of his total, damn near like one sixth, sorry, of his subscriber total. So he had taken a pretty significant hit in subscribers, one sixth or one seventh, now I think about it. But anyways, he had taken a pretty decent chunk of his subscribers already left, and that number was increasing literally as I was taking my notes. I have no idea what it is up to right now. So yeah, what happens next though really is up to all of y'all. Um, while I definitely have a lot I want to say, and this will be another video as well as another article about what the victims of these two YouTubers can and maybe should do, um, in terms of whether these YouTubers get a second chance or whether this is a career-ending blunder for them, that's on your hand. If they can continue to find an audience and continue to sustain themselves off that audience, they will probably do so. And we've seen cases where that's happened. Um, we, we, you know, talked about, you know, Philip Mayusin, where someone, where basically he plagiarized, got caught, did not handle it particularly well. And then when he tried to come back, was basically had the door shut in his face. But then there are people like, you know, writer and reporter uh, Benny Johnson, who has been caught plagiarizing and committing other journalistic infractions multiple times and continues to find work wherever he wants to, basically. So it's up to the audience. If the audience takes this seriously and doesn't show up for their work again, it's done. It's over. 
that's their career. It's in the bag. It's over. But if there is that audience and they continue to exploit it, then yeah, they're going to have a career. So uh, that's something I'm going to be watching very closely as time goes on. My hope is that in both of these cases, they just kind of disappear and that's the end of it. I think that's the best thing because it would also serve as a good lesson to others that may be tempted to follow that path. But yeah, all in all, what happens next realistically is up to you and the audiences of those YouTubers in particular. And finally, I'm going to end things today by answering a few frequently asked questions or rather questions I've gotten emailed to me were posted or postulated in a Reddit thread about my article or have been DM, tweeted, Facebook, whatever at me. Basically, I've seen two questions over and over and over again, so I'm going to take the time to answer them. Um, the first question I've gotten a lot is, did you see a traffic spike to your site when the plagiarism when H Bomber Guys video went live? Um, the honest question, the honest answer there is no, not until I posted my article. I posted my article on Tuesday. His video went live on Sunday. I'm hopefully publishing this on Wednesday. Uh, but yeah, basically, um, after the video went up, I noticed a little bit extra traffic to um, the Cinemassacre article. But remember, I've got three articles about Philip. I've got one about Cinemassacre. And I've got a 2018 article about plagiarism on YouTube more broadly that talks about a lot of the same things. None of those got any additional traffic. The Cinemassacre one got a small amount and plagiarism today a little bit, but nothing that really sent off alarm bells. I actually found the video of the same way I think everyone did. It just popped up. I'm an H -bom an H Bomber guy subscriber, and it popped up in my recommended when I opened up the YouTube app on my phone. It's really that simple. But no, I did not get an initial traffic spike. Now, once I published my article, it's been gangbusters. Then we get pr I get pretty good traffic at PT, and people are like, oh, it's such an out of the way site. No one's going to read this. And Thousands of people per day do. It's not big. It's not huge, but it's sustained a consulting business and other things for, like I said, about 18 years now. So it's it's doing well enough on traffic. But yeah, we're currently at a rate where I think we're about five or six times normal traffic. Luckily, I have a great content delivery network in bunny.net, and I have a great hosting provider in the form of CloudWaves, two beefy boys teaming together to make sure the site is running smooth and that you can read the article if you so choose, which I encourage you to do. The second question is, what was it like to wake up and see this in your YouTube or just to see this in general? I actually saw it on Sunday, um, but unfortunately, I had obligations all day that day and I couldn't start watching until Monday morning. So and then I spent most of the day Monday doing my regular work, but also watching it section by section by section and taking notes. And I was able to finish it pretty much by that afternoon evening with plans of writing an article about it on Tuesday, which is what I did. Um, as far as what it's like, I've got to be honest with you. I've been running plagiarism today for 18 years, and I don't want this to sound like I'm minimizing the size of this or I'm minimizing the work of H Bomber Guy broadly. I'm not, but I have been through a lot of these types of things, and this just isn't the craziest one. I'm, I'm sorry. It's kind of crazy. It's, it is a little bit crazy, but it's just not the craziest incident. Um, I've dealt with. I think the craziest would have to be the Melania Trump thing from 2016, which H Bomber guy did touch on. But basically, with that, I learned about it the same way everyone else did via CNN or I can't remember which news network you sent me the push alert, but I got a push alert literally while I was playing Pokemon Go. I had traveled to a place to get water types. I uh, got it, you know, and long story short, too late. Um, I got the alert while I was out and about, packed up, went home, started work on the article for it. And the next day, um, the day after I published my article, I literally spent, I think, 16 straight hours bouncing from news interview to news interview between newspapers, blogs, radio stations. And it culminated in me appearing on Dr. Drew head, Dr. Drew's headline news show that he had at the time. It was nuts. It was easily the longest day that I've had in my life, and I can't say I got paid for any of it. 
but it was incredibly long, incredibly tiring. That was an absolutely insane story. And also recently, um, the Jimmy Bellow case where the author plagiarized my site when writing a plagiarism apology uh, letter, not making that up. That was crazy, too. That ended me up on NPR's Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me. Um, a lot of nuts stuff happened with that. Uh, so, yeah, this has been crazy. Don't get it wrong. But it's also just not the craziest I've seen in 18 years. This, is, this I think, is a good thing, though. I mean, this type of attention to a very real ethical issue facing YouTube, I think, is a positive thing. And my hope is that other YouTubers watch this video and learn from it and become better writers from it. I think that's the best and the ideal goal here is to make better YouTubers down the line. Well, on that note, everyone, once again, my name is Jonathan Bailey. I am from the website Plagiarism Today. Please check out uh, my site. Also, you can catch me at copybyte.com. That is my consulting site where I help people with plagiarism issues, serve as an expert witness, and also do a bunch of other functions related to copyright and plagiarism issues. Check out that site as well. It's C-O-P-Y-B-Y-T-E.com. Until next time, though, this is Jonathan Bailey signing off.